Oh, here you go. That's about that. Yeah, it is. See, you know how to turn enough. You're good. <laughs> Hey, we are live. Welcome, guys, to another live session from NZ Pocket Guide. We're going to be answering all your questions about traveling in New Zealand today. So all you have to do is to pop into the live chat and ask your questions because, um, yeah, because we're the right people to ask uh, those. Despite the fact it's early morning, it's 8 a.m. in New Zealand right now on Sunday morning. And, yeah, we'll answer all your questions about travelling in New Zealand because we kind of are the experts of travelling in New Zealand. That's right. This is Robin and I'm Laura. And we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide because it literally has thousands and thousands of articles to help you plan your trip to New Zealand, of course, when you are actually able to come to New Zealand. Yeah. So we cover all sorts of travel on nzpocketguide.com from doing two weeks on a camper van road trip around the country, maybe travelling on a budget, to a whole year doing a working holiday um doing a working holiday in New Zealand. Oh, you're having we, a hard time this morning yeah. as well. What's going on? Um so yeah, we cover all that good stuff on nzpocketguide.com. So that's probably the best place to go get to your questions answered about traveling in New Zealand. But if you're not really into reading, um then we do this live Q&A session every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. And just so you know for times around the world, we do have a link in the description below. To to, um, so you can schedule when it's going to be the next live session for you guys in your time zone. Um, so make sure to check that out so you know when it's going to be next for where you are in the world. Um, so what we do in this live session, you come along onto the live chat and ask your questions about traveling in New Zealand. But also we go through some of the questions we've received throughout the week in the comment section of any of our YouTube videos. So if you mix, miss the live session, then we can go through those questions as well in the comments. There you go. All right, guys. So as usual, we're going to read every comment. So go ahead with your questions. We have Anthony Comstock that says Morena for Cali from California, USA. So if you guys don't know what uh, Morena means, it means good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language. We also have Carly Munoz. Uh, hey, guys. Hey, Carly. Hi. We actually um, used your uh, keyring this week. Uh, we <laughs> yes. actually got a key from a squash club because we are starting to play squash. And we needed the keyring for that key. And so we used uh, one of the Mexican Keyring, I think, is the one that says Viva Mexico that we use. So, <laughs> yeah. here you go. We thought about you this week. Um, Carly says, uh, I don't know if you remember me. Uh, I miss New Zealand so much. It feels unreal to think that my trip to New Zealand in March was cl my closing event before the world ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she says, it's 2 p.m. on Saturday in Mexico. Oh, awesome. Well, you know what? You were probably one of the um, kind of last traveler to get to finish enjoying your trip to New Zealand before the whole border in New Zealand has closed. So it's, uh, yeah, you got, you got quite Pretty lucky, lucky on this yeah. one. Yeah. And uh, she says she's so glad we are okay and healthy. Yes, we're really lucky in New Zealand. Uh, you know, the, 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 the whole crisis has been very well managed. So we, we kind of good. We have Girish Gore that says, hi, how are you doing, Girish? Thank you for joining us. We have Martina Sten that says hi from Germany. Martina, thank you for joining us another week. You're becoming a little bit of a regular right here. So that's awesome. Where are you from in Germany, Martina? Just so we get to know you a little bit better as well. Uh, Nestor Benavides say hola from Uruguay. Hey, how are you hi. doing? It looks like we have a couple of people from South America today. Carly is from Mexico. Um, that's awesome. Girish says, um, uh, when are the New Zealand borders opening? All right, so uh, a bit of news from New Zealand, if you, if you want to know some news, uh, Girish. So there has not been any announcement for when will the border open with uh, the rest of the world uh, from New Zealand. We do have a video on this channel where we actually give our prediction, and we will update that after the New Zealand election. So here's a, here's a bit of news from New Zealand in the meantime. So first up, it is International Cinnamon Roll Day. So if you are wanting to bite into a cinnamon roll, go ahead. <laughs> It's also International Change a Light Day. So if you have a broken light bulb that you've been procrastinating in changing, um, today may be the right day to do so. Now, in more serious news, <laughs> New Zealand is going to have a massive, uh, uh, massive, uh, a big election uh, in a couple of weeks where we're going to be electing a new prime minister. We recently had a, a debate between all the candidates and it was a very civilized debate and an easy to watch debate based on policies and uh, implementation on policies. So for some people that may be different than what they experience, but in New Zealand, that's what we had. So this election is going to happen in about two weeks. 
And uh, this probably will bring some changes to what the New Zealand border policy will be if there is a change of government. If there is no change of government, we're going to be sticking with our current plan, which is zero tolerance. Now, uh, New Zealand this week, we had quite a big news when a couple of territories of Australia have opened travel uh, from New Zealand to their territories. So I think that's Northern Territories and New South Wales, if I'm correct. But I'm not sure. It's two territories in Australia. That's why I know. So Australia says... New Zealanders, you can come to New to Australia and come and visit and travel because New Zealand has the virus kind of under control. Now, the Prime Minister responded, the local New Zealand Prime Minister responded and said, OK, that's nice. We appreciate that. But we don't want Australians right now until you have had an entire month without any community transmission, which is not near to be happening in Australia from what we see in the news. So that should show you that New Zealand is really not going to take any risk and is not willing to or reopen its border, even if some international countries are willing to make some step toward New Zealand. So with that in mind, Girish, we don't see the borders opening anytime soon. So we don't see anything opening until 2021. And if you want to know our predictions, you can check out that video where we have our predictions. Now, in about two and a half weeks to three weeks after the election, when we know who's going to be in charge, we will release a new video with our new updated predictions. Uh, we just don't want to release a video right now that's going to be our predictions, and then in two weeks, everything is going to change. So that's a bit of information for you. Um, I hope that helps because it's giving you a little bit of context. And uh, yeah, if you do have uh, some more questions, Girish, go ahead. Uh, Extreme Talota says, Morena Kutu. Um, so how are you doing, mate? Are you going to uh, referee some rugby today or not? Are you heading to Rotorua today? Or is the rugby season over yet? No, not yet. There's a, a few more weeks, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I thought it know. was nearly over. <laughs> Carly says, totally so lucky. Two days after we got in, they started asking for 15-day quarantine. And like three days later, they completely closed the border. I feel really so blessed. I got to do everything we planned. I've been crazed, uh, craving so much Ferg Burger. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know, Ferg Burger is a really large, juicy, and long-awaited <laughs> burger in Queenstown, where you have to queue for a very ungodly amount of time to yeah. get a burger. Uh, if you want to try a really good burger as well in Queenstown, but you don't want to do the queue, you can try Devil's Burger. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um and she also said, New Zealand's a dream of civility, amazing people and tolerance. So jealous. Mexico is just a nightmare right now. Adopt me, please. <laughs> <laughs> you should create like a, a, a program, Adopt a Mexican, and then people can just adopt <laughs> yeah. someone. That, that could be quite funny. Um, Martina said that she lives near Hamburg in the north. Okay, cool. And Gary says, thank you. You're very welcome, Garish. So we're here to kind of uh, tell you um, everything that's happening in New Zealand and also answer all your travel questions. So if you have any questions, Pop them in the comments. We're here to help. Uh, in the meantime, we actually did receive some questions because what you guys can do is that if you can't make it to a live session, it's okay. You can put your question in the comments of any of our videos, even this one if you're watching the replay, and we will pick them up, print them, and answer them yep. for you later on. So... Let's go ahead. What is the question we got today? Okay, so we got a question from Elijah saying, Hello, we are a family in Christchurch and are planning to go to the North Island. We want to spend time in Rotorua to see family. What is the best thing to do with two kids, seven years old and 13 years old, in Rotorua? Thanks a lot. We love your videos. Nice. So um, Rotorua is a dream, a dream come true for kids. There is yeah. so many activity. It's absolutely fantastic the amount of things that there is to do uh, in Rotorua. And in fact, we do have on NZ Pocket Guide. Oh, that's that's turned a bit too much. Mm -hmm. On NZ Pocket Guide, we have this article right here, which is ten things to do with kids in Rotorua. There is really a lot of stuff to do, and we'll go through some of those right here, and we'll uh, tell you a little bit what we think about all of those activities. And we'll do something a little bit different because usually I feel like. I talk a little too much. Maybe just a little bit. So we're, we're <laughs> going to get Laura to talk a little bit more. And for the first activity with kids, to do, no, to do with kids in Rotorua, we're going to talk about uh, the sheep show in Agrodome. Yes, so Agrodome is probably one of the most popular farm shows and farm tours in New Zealand. Um, there's two sections to it. So there is the farm show, which is um, like a sort of sit down show where you get to watch sheep shearing mostly. It is very much oriented around sheep because New Zealand is known to have quite a lot of sheep. And then they also have the farm tour where you 
basically get to go around and see lots of different aspects of New Zealand farming. You get to go feed different animals and they, they have a, a lot of different animals there. They have all sorts of sheep, cattle, ostriches, alpacas, llamas, they're all those sort of things um, they have there. So you can go feed them, pet them with the kids as well. And they also have a fruit orchard as well because New Zealand is really known for its fruit growing as well. And you can try a few different sort of fruit products there too. So you can experience both those activities like separately, but you can also experience them together to have like a full complete farming experience. Now, Elisa is a local, so maybe she has seen a fair number. Maybe she's of... seen a few sheep here and there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's a bit less exceptional. And she probably also have been in a lot of bushwalk. But there is a way in which you actually get to see a bushwalk in a completely different perspective. And that is the redwood tree walk. Oh, yep. Yeah. So, um, so the redwood forest are the, uh, it's quite hard to pronounce, but the Fakawera Wera Redwood Forest Sorry. <laughs> um, is um, is uh, basically a big sort of plantation of Californian redwoods, which are absolutely huge. I think they've been there for over a hundred years now. And one really cool aspect of this forest is that it's got the Redwoods Tree Walk, which is sort of like loads of different suspension bridges. I think there's 28 suspension bridges in total. And you can sort of experience the forest from a different perspective, quite high up in the the canopy so you can sort of look out for birds as well and that's just a really cool thing to do with um kids pretty much of all ages as long as they can walk there's pretty safe bridges with you know lots of like sort of you know the sides are quite safe as well so yeah anyone can do it pretty much and it's an easy good thing to do which only takes maybe about half an hour to an hour to enjoy now, if you have kids of, you know, very young ages, there is something that you can guarantee is accessible for all type of kids, and that's Rainbow Springs. Yeah, so Rainbow Springs is kind of like a wildlife park, but also has a few sort of um, children's playgrounds and fun rides there as well. So they have a kiwi house there. So if you're looking to see a kiwi bird in New Zealand, this is a really good place to see them. They have a kiwi hatchery, so you can see kiwi kiwi bird eggs that have been taken and they're sort of nurtured before the, the chick is strong enough to be released back into the wild and um, so it's a really cool thing to yeah a different way to sort of see kiwi birds in New Zealand but also Rainbow Springs they have loads of different sort of native New Zealand birds in the aviaries they have um, rainbow trout because rainbow trout is quite a popular thing in New Zealand uh, nowadays and they have big sort of um, tanks to see them and big sort of uh, clear water pools and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a really good way to see wildlife. But they also have a log flume ride there, so that's that's pretty fun. And um, we do have a video of us actually going to Rainbow Springs and doing that ride as well. So you should go check that video out. Um, and yeah, they have a whole bunch of different stuff there. Maori experiences. They have a nice cafe, children's playgrounds, and sort of like a water park thing. Lots of stuff. You'll can easily spend a whole day there with the kids. All right, so speaking of fun rides, one of the funnest rides in Rotorua is the Rotorua Duck Tour. Oh yeah, so if you want to do some sightseeing, um, probably one of the best things to, best ways to do that with children is on the Rotorua Duck Tours, which is um, an amphibious um, a military truck that is uh, yeah, basically painted bright yellow so it can go into the lakes as well. So you get to see some of the um, important historical and natural sites around Rotorua while also getting to do a tour on the lakes. There's two lakes that they go to um, and Rotorua is surrounded by I think around 20 different lakes so they do go to visit a couple of different ones and yeah it's a good way to just see more of the area. And if you do want to explore some of the lakes and you don't want to pay a fee to do a tour or anything, you can go on your own and plan yourself a day trip to any of the lakes. Which lakes would you recommend? Um, one of the lakes I'd recommend is uh, the one called Blue Lake. Um, it, this is really good because it's got a bit of a beach there. There's a short walk around the lake as well. Um, and there's a children's playground nearby. So that's a really popular one for families. And I forget the other one, is it? Does it say there the Oraco, I think? Is that correct? O Oka Okarika. Okarika Lake. Yes. Um, Sorry. Is I, I was I was reading for the next one. Oh yeah, okay. Cool. So Okarika Lake. This is a this has a really nice short boardwalk. So if even if you've got um even if you need to you know push a stroller or anything, this is the sort of um walk you can do. That's very easy. Yeah, for basically for all ages. If you've got toddlers, they can do it as well. And it's just another nice sort of area to enjoy some great scenery around Rotorua. 
All right, but Rotorua is really famous for all this geothermal attraction and all these geothermal uh, parks. So there's quite a few geothermal parks around to visit and almost all of, actually all of them are very family friendly. Yes, yeah. Um, so let's go over some of the most popular geothermal parks. Yeah, so um, a really popular one is Waiotapu. Um, this is probably one of the cheaper um, full geothermal parks you can go to and it's famous for its champagne pool, which is that orange lined lake which you might have seen photos of. Um, and that's a good one for um, families if you're, I think it's a little bit better if you haven't got strollers and things. There's a few steps and stuff around the walkways. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's a short sort of experience to be had. It's not too big and it's sort of easy to manage if you've got limited time. Another really awesome one is the Waimangu Volcanic Valley or Waimangu Thermal Valley. I don't quite remember how they... how they Volcanic Valley. Volcanic Valley. Um, and this is a really huge uh, geothermal park. But the great thing about this is that you can walk all the way down to the bottom of the thermal park and they have buses going up and down them up and down this sort of central road the whole day so if anyone gets tired you can just sort of head back up there's a cafe up there as well so even though it's quite a huge geothermal park you don't have to feel like it's going to be too strenuous to get back up so because you're the, the walks there are kind of like going downhill you get to see lots of different sort of steaming lakes and big colorful sort of hot springs and stuff and bubbling mud and all that sort of thing all that sort of thing but um yeah it, it is quite a long walk down to the bottom and but thankfully they do have a bus to get back up <laughs> yeah. um okay so another thing to do with kids i don't know if your youngest one will be able to do it but definitely your oldest one will be able to do it and that's rotora canopy tour it's a zip line yeah so i think yes yeah, seven years old you should that is i think it's usually six years old that they say is that you need to be older than six to do the rotorua ro uh, rotorua canopy tours but this is a really awesome tour where you get get to do different zip lines through native forest and it's quite eco-based as well so they sort of teach you a lot about New Zealand forests about New Zealand wildlife and a lot of the time on these tours they actually do some um, bird feeding to some of the native birds they just basically put some food on your hand you can hold it up and sometimes native birds that are actually wild come down and take some food from you so that's that's pretty awesome and um, but they have two different tours to do and um, they have a shorter one which is really good for kids and I think it's the most popular tour that they do there or they have a longer one which um, includes a few more zip lines including a tandem zip line so you can go down two people at the same time which is pretty awesome Nice. Now, if you do want some choice in your adrenaline kind of activities, you can head to Velocity Valley where you can kind of pick which activity you want to do. And there's going to be some that fits every age. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, New Zealand's really well known for its adrenaline activities, but Velocity Valley sort of makes it accessible for kids. They have um, um, something called Freefall Extreme, which is where you sort of get to see what it's like to experience sort of skydiving without actually having to do skydiving. And the age limits for most of the rides here are quite low. There's also the um, Agrojet, which is a jet boat sort of ride around a sort of um, purpose made lake. So, you know, you get to do lots of twists and turns, which is really awesome. And they have this hilarious thing called the Schweeb, where you get into sort of this little pedal car, which is on an overhead rail and you race against each other to basically yeah get through there pretty quickly it, it, that's a bit strenuous but i think you can older kids can do it as well which is really cool and i think uh, also they have the rotary of bungee there as well where kids over 10 years old i think it is can do a bungee jump if they really want to if they're feeling kind of crazy um and there's also a giant swing there as well which i think that was my favorite thing to do at velocity valley just they do a huge swing with a bit of a free fall at the beginning and that's a really awesome thing too. it was scary there is a video <laughs> about uh about us doing this um uh, and all basically the activity laura just mentioned and uh, yeah you can find it on the channel very easy and finally another thing you can do in rotua which is uh something which rotua is very famous for is immersing yourself into the maori culture yeah, so um, there's loads of different tours you can do in Rotorua to experience the Maori culture. Um, but I'll sort of just focus more on the night tours because I know I've given you a lot of activities that you can do throughout the day. But if you're looking for something to do on the evening, you have Tamaki Maori Village and Mitai Maori Village, which both offer kind of similar experiences with um, sort of teaching you what a pofiri is, which is a traditional welcoming ceremony, and also sort of doing like cultural performance 
analysis. So you get to see the hacker performed and sort of teaching you little, little bits about the Maori culture and different sort of Maori games. And they have sort of mock-up villages so you can go around and do interactive experiences, which is really good for the kids. And then at the end of the experience, you get to indulge in a traditional Maori meal called a hangi, which is presented in a buffet style because there's quite a lot of people there. But yeah, it's an all round sort of good way to experience the Maori culture in Rotorua. All right. So if you did find this video useful, there is a link in the description for an article to nzpocketguide.com, which has even more details. It has link for you to go to, like, you know, to check out more about all those activities and all that. So we like to do that and make that very useful for you guys. You can also hit the like button to say thank you for all our hard work. It's a free way for you to just reward us. And you can subscribe if you want to see more travel tips from us. In the meantime, we'll go back to the live chat. All right. Everybody, we're going to read all the comments. Uh, sorry for um, taking the time to answer this question in a way too lengthy form as we do all the time. <laughs> um, so Extreme Talota, replying to my questions about referring rugby, he says uh, he's doing well and he's taking a day off. Uh, they new new referees which are doing uh, rugby refereeing with him. And he had six games yesterday and um, he refed yesterday. is a bit day, so... He is just uh, he's just taking a rest and starting tomorrow again. Navin Nodi says, I got offered a letter from Fitirea Polytechnic in Wellington. I'm eagerly waiting to start life in New Zealand, but I'm worried about isolation. Do you guys have any idea about where will we stay? Um, uh, is it mandatory? So yes, it's mandatory right now. And where you stay is basically just a hotel. Not in a cage or anything like that. Don't panic. It's just a hotel room that is just admin administrated by the government. Yeah, and they're quite nice hotels as well. It's yeah. not nothing, you know, it's hotels that people would usually pay a lot of money to stay in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he said he doesn't want to stay alone and what to do. Um, you go to. It's isolation. So you have to, either you travel with someone, then you can stay isolated in your own bubble. So let's say Laura and I travel together. We will be able to stay together. But if you're just traveling alone, you will have to. So what you can do is just kind of wait and not um, not come to New Zealand until those, um, you know, those quarantine requirements are lifted. This not even sure that in February 2021, the intakes are going to be actually um, going through so we have said that many many times in this channel we really strongly advise you guys to not pay any fee not um not sign up to any courses or anything like that just yet and just wait until it's guaranteed that you get to come to new zealand because even right now you wouldn't with just a student visa have the right to come to new zealand and go in isolation and all that it's just not happening um just because the borders are closed so until you know that you have the right to come and do the isolation i wouldn't do um i wouldn't pay anything um, MB says uh, that uh, and New Zealand is a friendly country. He also says Morena. Morena, MB, how are you doing? Um, and Gerish says love from India. Navin says love from India. Everybody is lovely and mm -hmm. sharing love. I love that. Extreme Talota and uh, MB are talking together about rugby. Michael, Michael Connell says good morning. Thoroughly enjoy your video and Sunday morning live chat. You do an awesome job about providing about New Zealand. Cool. Oh, that's very Thank nice. You. Thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> we try to stick to the fact. Um, that's 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 what we try to do. Sometimes our opinion just transpires through. So yeah, uh, Michael, if you enjoy what we do, don't forget to hit the like button. It's a it's a great free way to help us out. Uh, it tells YouTube that we are doing something useful. Sherry is here. She says good morning. Hey, Sherry, how are you doing? That's been a, a wee while. I think uh, we haven't seen you in like uh, two weeks, three weeks. She says, sorry for missing out on the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Here you go. I'm excited about the start of the travel bubble. Hopefully, that means that I'll be able to visit by April. Well, hopefully it is. Um, it, it was quite surprising, to be quite honest, to see that a couple of, northern, uh, of territories in Australia opened travel to New Zealanders and that the New Zealand government wasn't willing to reciprocate and say that until you have no community transmission for 30 days or a month, um, then we will not be considering Australia as part of our travel bubble. So that was that was very surprising to see. But things may change. And also Australia seems to kind of start getting a little bit into control. It's nowhere near done yet. But, you know, hopefully things will happen well. So we, we're praying for you, Sherry. We know you have mm -hmm. a trip planned. So hopefully you get to come here. Yeah. Sush says, what are the pros and cons of choosing to live permanently in New Zealand? Well, Sush, um, it's kind of funny because I'm actually working on a video on, on exactly that. I'm actually working on a video on doing 
exactly this thing uh, drawing from my experience moving to New Zealand about 10 years ago and Laura drawing uh, from her experience being in New Zealand for seven years now, something like that. Yeah. Too much, too much, mm -hmm. too long. So uh, we're actually planning on a video on that and that's coming by the end of the month. So if you're cool with that, Shush, I won't answer your question. Um, but since I'm just doing the notes and everything, I will actually uh, write your name. I mean, I will actually say your name in the video. So I'll say that, uh, you know, you were asking the question. So I'll write your name. So you'll be mentioned on that video that's come up. So stay yeah. subscribed and you'll see that. Yeah, so make sure so you know when that video comes out. Make sure to subscribe. And also beside the subscribe button, once you click it, you'll see a little bell icon. And that way you'll get notification for each of our videos that come out. I hope that you're not too upset, but it's just I literally have been like, you know, preparing the notes and everything like that on that um, on that recently. So I just I just don't want to spoil everything, spoiler right? Spoiler alert. Um, uh, MB, MB is giving you some politics stuff because, yes, so uh, the reason why MB is uh, talking about the end of life choice or euthanasia and, uh, and marijuana, so weed legalization, is because once we're going to be uh, electing a new prime minister in two weeks, as part of this election process, we also do a referendum and we're voting to allow or not allow end of life choice and allow or not alone, uh, uh, you know, recreational marijuana use. Uh, in New Zealand. So that's why he's talking about that right now because it's, you know, the thing that everybody talks about right now in New Zealand since it's part of the election process. We have Estelle Brits that say that uh, she's from uh, South Africa. So nice to see cool. you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Estelle. Carly says, bye guys. It was so nice to see you. Got to run. Hope this night nightmare ends soon and I can visit again. Love you all. Oh, that's <laughs> nice, Carly. Thank you very much. Well, we hope you pop in, you know, from time to time. Come and say hi. Um, Extreme Talota and MB are just talking together, so I'm not um, I'm not going to go over disclaiming all your informations, guys. Estelle says I can't wait to come and visit my kids. Oh, that's awesome! Where nice. are your grandkids living, Estelle? Which uh, town in New Zealand are they at? Um, okay, Navin says I appreciate your guidance. You're very welcome, Navin. Amina says, please, can New Zealand visa be issued since the borders are still closed? So currently, I mean, uh, Immigration New Zealand is close to anyone which is living or outside of New Zealand. Immigration New Zealand only process and works on visas of people which are currently stranded in New Zealand. Because what happened since the beginning of the, of the whole quarantine and, and the whole you know, COVID-19 crisis is that there are quite a bunch of people which have been just stuck in New Zealand. You know, they came here with a visa, you know, like a, like a short temporary visa. And they were like, okay, I'm just going to stay in New Zealand for about a year and I'm going to fly back home and, uh, you know, start my life back home. But a lot of people got stranded here and they just simply can't get home. So uh, uh, New Zealand is working on giving them different visas. They actually released a new different type of visa, which allows them to work in hockey to do your job, to help out with this issue because we can't get seasonal workers in the country and all those kind of things. So they're, they're working on that solely and they do not work on issuing visas to people outside of New Zealand because they literally just can't come to New Zealand. But as soon as the borders are going to reopen and as soon as there's going to be a timeline for all that, then they're going to start reworking our visas. So our approach right now is do your research, but don't apply for anything. Don't pay anyone. Don't, you know, don't start to get the wheels turning just yet. Just do your research. And then when things are going to reopen, then you can apply for visas. That's our advice. However, if you want to do something different, you absolutely can. We are just two people on the couch. That is it. So don't, don't forget that you also have a choice of your own. Sush says, thank you so much, love for Minja. Nice. That's, that's, I appreciate the fact that you, uh, you agree with, uh, with, with this little process. Just no spoilers in this channel right here. <laughs> um, Extreme Talota says, Robin and Laura, have you refused any game? No, we don't barely know any of the rules. I know on rugby, you need to pass the ball at the back. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you hurt yourself a lot. Um, so sports wise, we, we really not good. I mean, you should have seen yeah. us watching our first game of cricket because I don't know if you guys know, uh, if you guys are watching from overseas, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of cricket. If you're from India, you probably have, it's a really big sport in India, but if you're like me from France or, or, you know, I did spend a fair bit of time in Canada or in us, I've never really heard of cricket. 
And those things last for hours. So should have seen Laura one time going to a mate of ours. I said, hey, let's go watch a cricket game. And we were just looking at each other like, what mm -hmm. are we watching? What is going yeah. on? So sports-wise, we're not really that good uh, at, at all It's that. not where our expertise lies. No, we very much Certainly not hacking. enough to do refereeing. <laughs> Also, uh, you know, although we are quite fit, you know, we do a lot of activities, run using a lot of hike and everything. I don't know if I will be able to uh, run for Keep 90 up, minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is kind of a skills. I mean, when you watch a game and you see the referee kind of running everywhere, you're like, oh, oh holy moly, because he has, you know, like players, they pass the ball to each other. Therefore, that allows them to move, you know, to not have to run all the way because someone gives them the ball. But the referee doesn't have the ball. He literally have to run as much as the ball is moving. Yeah. And there is nothing in the game that moves more than the ball. So I don't think that we are in that kind of shape to be able to do that. It's just obviously our take on that. Um, you know, maybe I'm wrong and maybe I would definitely be able to referee just a book to read and do it. But I've never tried. And I don't know. It's just uh, not something I think. I'm yeah, maybe we'll do. leave it to the experts like you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It, it, it looks like you go every week. You know, it looks yeah. like, and you, you look like you, you know, you say there's three new referees over there. So you look like you're in no shortage of referees. So yeah. here you go. What is Shiri saying, Laura? Uh, Shiri. Oh, yeah, Shiri saying, I keep seeing all the specials and everything at the moment. I really hope they continue when the borders open. I'm thinking of booking a tour with Kiwi Experience as it's 20% off at the moment. So the thing to note about Kiwi Experience is that they're always 20% off. Oh, like, usually way more than 20%. Or 20. more, Actually, yeah. Actually, to be fair, there is two hop-on-hop of bus companies called Stray and Kiwi Experience that usually do a lot of discounts. At the moment, they are the most expensive they've ever been. Yeah. They said they do specials and everything like that, but because they removed a lot of the tools and everything, they actually are at the most expensive prices just because there is no customers because locals don't necessarily want to travel their yeah. own country by bus. So don't book a tour right now. There is absolutely no point. You'll get it cheaper when the borders open. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. But in terms of other... Uh, sorry, another... Act in terms of activities elsewhere in New Zealand, like, you know, like jet boat tours and bungee jumps and all that sort of thing, they're actually cheaper than they normally are. So those sort of activities definitely have more of a discount at the moment. They do lots of sort yes. of midweek specials and, you know, sort of things to more, um, you know, you know, get the local tourists to go and do their activities and do something that, you know, the locals haven't done before. So yeah, definitely um, on different activities, you can get some really good deals at the moment. But yeah, for Kiwi, experience you can probably find better deals when the borders open yeah and, and to be fair for activity wise and accommodation wise the prices yes may go up uh, you know when international tourists can come again because you know there is a bit less of a of, of, a, of a dire need to attract local and therefore you know compete on prices then you have international tourists you can go back to your normal pricing um uh, you know structure yeah but for uh, for transportation definitely do not book anything right now MB says, good advice. Hold on your money, Sherry. So here you go. Someone agrees with us. Yeah. Um, Cartel Go says, love you guys. Is soccer as big in New Zealand as it is in, here in Europe? So he's from Europe. Yeah. Um, no, definitely not. I, uh, there is actually a bunch of, uh, of uh, football uh, Facebook groups around Oakland because there is a lot of international travelers. So there's a lot of people that kind of organize like, you know, football games to kind of like just play yourself. Mm. But to watch football, uh, it's not on TV. Um, there is probably leagues in some towns, but you never see, you know, like rugby is the sport. Yeah, here. I think like the main yeah. things in New Zealand is uh, is rugby and cricket. People love golf in New Zealand as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, soccer is a little bit on the sidelines, yeah. I guess. I've never seen like a football game advertised. I've never seen a football game on TV. Yeah. Uh, you know, none of that. Um, yeah. You know, you have it on like Sky, like the, the, the kind of a cable TV. You have like the European League and everything, but you've got to pay for the, you know, I mean, you've got to pay for that. It's not on the main channels or anything like that at, at all. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, football is not necessarily uh, really big here in New Zealand. It's all about rugby. So, you'll have to go for the oval ball instead of the round ball. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that's okay. You know, you can still watch, uh, yeah. watch the... the Unless you prefer... If, if you're looking more My... to play yourself, like yeah. like Robin was saying, there's a lot of like groups that get together in Auckland, but also in, in other towns as well, like in other towns that we've been around New Zealand, like Topor, like the sort of like larger, sort of large 
ish towns around New Zealand pretty much all have like a sort of like weekly football get together and stuff where they all play and things like casually. So there's also that as an option if you want to play yourself. Yep, I agree. <laughs> um, Extreme Talota replying to the rugby uh, referring debate that Laura and I, with information whatsoever, yeah. we're having. He says in rugby and rugby league, the ref, so the referee, runs more than the player. That is what we sort of assumed yeah, it did yeah. look like. We, uh, think, we think the referee runs as much as the ball. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, Catherine Paquet, uh, Catherine Paquet from Canada says, Hello from Canada. My sister and I are planning to go to New Zealand in the next year. Uh, and as a student in biology and ecology, I would really love to find the best places to appreciate diversity. Nice. So wow. New Zealand has amazing biodiversity, right? Just walking through a forest, you'll be impressed by all the fauna and flora. And you're going to actually be even more amazed by the flora than you're going to be by the fauna. It's crazy the amount of different plants that you're going to be seeing in just literally stopping walking in the forest and looking around. Yeah. Um, I, think, I guess maybe uh, each of us can pick like a couple of places to suggest to you. Um, but yeah, if you would like to you watch some of the itineraries video that we do. We obviously do a lot of those and you can kind of give us a bit more information and we can do one of those together so you and your sister can watch it and see that uh, later on. But let's talk a bit about biodiversity. The first thing I would pick for, uh, like, uh, you know, for sure will be Stewart Island. Stewart Island is a small island at the bottom of the South Island. Um, there is... Uh, it, 80% of it is a national park, so there's so much to see there. You could even see kiwi birds in the wild. You can watch us um, you know, on video, actually. We have videos of us exploring Stuart Island, doing hikes and everything. And in one of those videos, I spot a kiwi bird in the wild, which is mm. very epic. You can also go to Ulva Island, which is next to Stuart Island. So you go there from, from Ulva Island. It's literally like a two-minute boat trip. And, um, and in that little island, it's a sanctuary. There's no pest. And you get so many different birds and, and wildlife. It's fascinating. I absolutely love that. And if you're into biodiversity and seeing how an ecosystem kind of work and thrive on itself, you're going to love Ulva Island. <sighs> Yeah. Go, pick something else. Yeah, so another place I would pick is the Otago Peninsula near Dunedin. Um, although in terms of plant life, it's not actually that um, diverse because there is a lot of sort of sort of grassy farmlands in that area. There, it is quite diverse in the fact that they have wetlands there. And they also, the area attracts various different marine mammals, which are really cool to see. Um, in terms of the wetlands, you have loads of different sort of um, wetland birds and stuff. You can see various different native ducks. That there's spoonbills, which are pretty crazy looking birds. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's all sorts of different things that you can see just sort of in the wetland areas of the Otago, Otago Peninsula. But also um, on the peninsula, you can see some of the largest um, al well, seabirds in the world, which are the Royal Albatross. There's like a Royal Albatross colony there. There's penguin colonies there. So you can go on sort of tours to watch the little penguin, little blue penguins come back into the shore um, every evening. There's there's also um, New Zealand first seals there. You can go on tours to see yellow-eyed penguins, which are some of the rarest types of penguins in the world, um, coming back onto the beaches and stuff. So in terms of sort of marine wildlife, that's a really good place to see it, but while being still on land. Oh, well, speaking of marine wildlife, obviously I'm going to have to talk about Kaikura. Uh, Kaikura has fantastic marine wildlife, massive, gigantic megapods of dusky dolphins, um, you know, amazing whales. Uh, it has uh, uh, no penguins, but it has amazing seals as well. Um, and, and you have a fantastic amount of uh, seabirds as well. And you have tools specific to each of them. And swimming with seals is my favorite activity in New Zealand. Yes, out of all the activities that we've done in New Zealand, I picked this one as my favorite activity in New Zealand. So here you go. Um, so I really feel like it's a, it's a fantastic thing to do, Kaikura, for, uh, you know, um, biodiversity. You're going to see that, like, you know, just seeing how the marine biodiversity can thrive when it's well protected. It's kind of fantastic to, um, to witness. Yeah. Do you want to pick one more? Yeah. So another one to pick is on the North Island at a place called Sanctuary Mountain, also known as Monga Totari. Um, and this is basically a sort of huge mountain which is protected by a predator-proof fence, which means that none of the sort of introduced species of New Zealand can sort of get through and, you know, threaten the native birds and 
and um, reptiles and stuff that are in the sanctuary. Um, and over here, you can see loads of different types of quite rare birds. They have takahe, which is sort of a large blue flightless bird. They have um, kokako, which are very fast birds, which are really hard to find, like really hard to see, but they're sort of gray with like these blue pieces on the side of their beaks. Um, there's kiwi birds there. There's uh, tuatara, which are some of the, um, oh, they're said to be like the ancestors of the dinosaurs. They're really ancient reptiles. They have a third eye, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a parietal eye, so yes. it's not really an eye, but it's, 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 it's just, very interesting. Very yeah, interesting. It just yeah. sounds better to say they have a third eye. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a really cool place to not only just see, obviously, native forests, but also get to see a real variety of wildlife that um, the sort of conservation uh, team there are sort of working to protect. And it's a, the going to these sort of wildlife sanctuaries or like uh, native bird sanctuaries, which there's quite a lot of lot of in New Zealand that's probably like the best places to go to actually learn about the biodiversity in New Zealand because there's a lot of information and um, sort of information panels and stuff along the way to tell you more about it. So there is a couple of honorable mentions we're going to talk about Tiri Tiri Matangi Island which is off the shore of Auckland, Motuara Island which is off the shore of Picton and uh, also Zelandia, which is just, uh, it's not an island, but it's, uh, it's a sanctuary in Wellington. There is also beautiful Kapiti Island, which is off the shore of, well, the Kapiti coast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's much more information about all those places on nzpocketguide.com. That's nzpocketguide.com. And uh, yeah, you'll find so much info about all of those. So if any of those kind of picked your interest, you can do a little bit more research on there. And if you find this video useful, make sure to hit the like button. It's a free way to say thank you for all our hard work and subscribe if you want to see more um you know travel tips like those ones in the meantime i'll go back to the live chat i hope that that was a full enough answer for you catherine we, we always go a little too much into details but i hope that you got something that you you you're interested in in there alves says i'm from the uk and i was hoping to experience working in new zealand for a year april 2021 i know you guys can't video, can't give a definite answer but when do you think the border opens so, Arves, um, I actually already gave a, a bit of an answer at the beginning of this video. But guys, we're frozen. We refresh the windows. Ah, YouTube. <laughs> Every time at the same time, at about 42 yeah. minutes on there, it just does it. All right, guys, tell us when you can see us again, and I'll, uh, I'll go again on the question of Arves. continue. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> Okay, it's good. Okay, we're back. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right, so uh, ah, so what I was saying is that a prominent figure of Air New Zealand has stated that he doesn't see the New Zealand border opening before March 2021. So you're asking um, if in March, April 2021, you can come to New Zealand from the UK. I think it's like, I'd say between 30 to 40% chances only. And we will update our predictions. So uh, make sure to stay subscribed to the channel so like that you get a notification when we do that it's usually kind of one of our popular videos that we do but um yeah oh i'm I, I, the one thing i would say is that don't spend your money don't pay anything just yet until you absolutely know you'll be able to come to new zealand and have yeah. a backup plan just in case the situation is really always evolving and if we get a second wave in new zealand we may just close everything again you know let's say we open to australia first which uh, we're probably going to open to the cook island first and we're probably going to open to like another south pacific island and then probably australia if we ever get any outbreak the borders are going to close again yeah. if we keep the same leadership if the leadership change we may open the border in two months nobody knows so yeah, so stay tuned for that. But um, I just don't want you to spend your money and then be disappointed. All right. Um, MB um, was talking to you, Catherine, and saying that he wants to visit Canada too. He loved his drive to Whistler. I did the drive to Whistler as well. I spent uh, quite a fair amount of time in Vancouver. And it is a fantastic drive. Leo Toledo says, hi, guys. Good morning. Is there any places in New Zealand that you still want to visit? Well, there is a place that we haven't visited, which is called the Chatham Islands. They are some Antarctic island quite far away from New Zealand. But guess what? Because New Zealand is in lockdown right now and Kiwis can travel, it's actually quite hard to go to the Chatham Island. A lot of people are going to travel there right now. So uh, it's quite expensive to go there now. And it's 
often fully booked because <laughs> it's a very, very small island. So we can't even get there. So that's frustrating. But yeah. yeah, that's the one place that I think that both Laura and I really want to visit. Yeah, I mean, there's places that, like, as you've seen on this channel, when we did our 365 days of 365 activities, we tried to visit pretty much as much of New Zealand as possible. But obviously, there's always t small towns and there's a million different walks that yes. we haven't done, for instance, because in New Zealand, there's a ton of different hiking trails and things. So, yeah, anything that any for me, any walk that I haven't done, I usually want to try and yeah. do it. So um, th there's there's a lot of places. But although yeah. we've done a lot, we you know, there is still so much to explore. Yeah. And one thing that we used to say, actually, I was at the end of when we did New Zealand's biggest gap year, in which we did 365 activities in 365 days all around New Zealand. Sounds epic. We actually did even more than that. We did close to 400 activities in one year. We were, we were saying with Laura quite often that we could do it all over again and never do twice the same activity. Yeah, there's, there is that much to do in New Zealand. So, yeah, I mean, I could list off a, a million different things that would be cool to do. Um, but the, the list is actually quite big that it's hard to pinpoint something. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, all right. What else is happening? Uh, Clay was saying, we have a dilemma in my house around the rugby and soccer. I'm a Kiwi and my partner is from Uruguay, where soccer is their passion. <laughs> Um, does our son play rugby or <laughs> soccer when he's old enough? Rock, paper, scissors won't cut it. <laughs> well, if you're brought up in New Zealand, you know, usually the reason why you do sports is you kind of find mates and kind of fit in and everything like that. So I think he should go for rugby because that would be something which he, he would be able to relate with more people around New Zealand. That's what I would say. Yeah. But if he's into, uh, you know, practicing an art more than strength he may want to go for the beautiful sport which is so good <laughs> yeah so good but that, that's that's all i'm gonna say here yeah i guess it's kind of like let him try both and then see which one he likes the most <laughs> yes yes make him choose for sure but yeah. otherwise another argument you can have for rugby is that if he plays rugby it's way easier to find a good soccer game on video games when it's really hard to find a good rugby yeah. game and it depends so how you much go. you want to preserve his face if you want to, <laughs> if you want <laughs> him you want him to look pretty yeah if you want him to look pretty go for soccer <laughs> if you don't mind his ears getting bashed up a little bit his nose maybe getting broken or something go for rugby yes <laughs> rugby players are not known to be pretty let's yeah. say <laughs> Um, Sherry Rusworth is where about are the wetlands, Laura? Are they close to Dunedin? I'd love to see, um, as I love to see plants and animals from other countries. Yeah, so uh, the what the uh, one I'm talking about in Dunedin is on the Otago Peninsula, and one of the wetlands there is in the Hooker Inlet. Um, so yeah, but New Zealand has a ton of wetland areas like um, al along the coasts and and even uh, around lakes and things. So yeah, there's really it really is like a, a prominent sort of um, landscape in New Zealand, and you can find them pretty easily when you're traveling around. Just um, sort of look up wetland walks and find one nearby <laughs> uh sherry says uh clay rugby all the way i'm a little biased um as it is more popular here in australia uh clay says speaking of birds have you ever seen the white heron where does one find one i heard about them but i never seen mm. them we actually see some white saw some white herons no we haven't we've seen gray herons gray herons sorry white herons are only found in one place in new zealand they're super rare and it's near franz joseph in the um I'm, it's a lake isn't it yeah the lagoon the oc yeah. oc or Carico lagoon i think something like that i think it's yeah. that so it's a lagoon near um near Franz Joseph Glacier. And yeah, you can go on... I'll find it on NZ Pocket Guide. Yeah, right yeah. We do mention it on um, on nzpocketguide.com. But yeah, um, it's a really good place. You can do walks there. So you can, you know... Yeah, I was going Ocarito Lagoon. Ocarito Lagoon near Franz Joseph. Yeah. Um, there's kayaking tours there. So you can, you know, go across the lake and uh, try your chances at seeing herons. But there's also walks around the area too, which are free to do. So it's another good to check them out and i think they're quite short walks as well um but yeah we haven't seen any of the white herons um but it would be really cool and they are super rare and it's really cool yeah. that the fact that yeah it's just they're only found in this one place in new zealand yeah but we saw the gray one 
Uh, yes. Catherine Paquet <laughs> says, whoa, amazing. I'm even more excited. I'll make sure to find even more info on your page. You're very welcome. <laughs> if you do have like list of places that you want to hit and you know how long you want to spend in New Zealand and what's your budget and how you want to travel and all that, you can always, you know, do a comment in any of our videos with like, you know, all those information. And what we usually do, we take them up and we kind of make an itinerary. We say, this is all the place you need to hit and we write everything down and we have the whole map and we love doing itineraries. So Keep on coming around, Catherine. Um, yeah, we're, we're here to help planning your, tr your trip. All right, then I'm going to skip everybody saying that uh, everything was buffering and not working because, well, thank you for your feedback, yep. but it's and not we're back now, so, yeah. Yep. Um, and then Arves says, many thanks for taking the time to answer my question. Much appreciated. No worries, no worries Arv. Uh, we'd be really happy to you know update you as soon as we do get more information. One of the things that we like to do in this channel is to try to actually stick to the fact. There is a lot of misinformation online about everything. So when we do have information, we actually give you this information. When it's a prediction, we make sure to label, like we say very clearly, it's our prediction. Um, and that's why we're not doing a new update until after the election, because there is really not much of a point of us completely randomly guessing until we got a little bit more information. And if you guys appreciate the fact that we're sticking like a lot to information and everything, you hit like, you hit subscribe, you support us, you're awesome. Speaking of supporting us, by the way, we are getting ever so close to uh, hitting 20,000 subscribers. Mm. So if you guys want to share the channel on Facebook or, or on Twitter or anything like that, give us a little bit of a push. When we hit 20,000 subscribers, we'll do a big giveaway. We'll do a longer live session. We will have a kind of a few things planned for you guys. So I think that'd be a lot. Have a NZ Pocket Guide party. Yeah, so yeah, we'll do something quite fun uh, for everybody and, and, and stuff like that. So if you guys want to kind of share a little bit the channel and, and recruit some uh, some new uh, new faithful followers for us, that'd be absolutely fantastic uh, because, yeah, that give us closer to doing a big giveaway for everybody. Yeah. Which we're looking forward to do. We, we got everything. We bought all the stuff. We're ready to give them away now uh, because it's coming. It's coming. Uh, BJN says, if you are a good canoeist, then on a good day, you can ride a great wave to the Chatham Islands. This is not an advice to follow, guys. This is not true. You will <laughs> die. Don't do that. Uh, it's very far. You should take a plane. If you're a good yeah. canoeist, uh, I think you need to be an exceptional <laughs> canoeist to, to make Even that trip. Even if you are, don't <laughs> do that. The Chatham Islands are very far from New Zealand. They're actually even in a different time zone. Okay. So are they? Yeah, I they actually are. Don't, I don't know. I think they are. Um, <laughs> Clay says, I agree, save this video for the future reference by the rugby and the soccer. <laughs> um, and he also recommends you, Sherry, and you, Catherine. He recommends you the Sinclair wetlands in Dunedin. Yeah, so if you need to know where wetlands are in Dunedin, Clay actually lives in Dunedin, so he can probably tell you where all of the good landscapes and places are to go. Uh, all right. So Catherine says, whoa, so nice. Everybody's looks all nice and friendly and all positive. And I just love all, the whole positivity right here. You guys are awesome. Ladies, <laughs> you know, we have a community which is big-ish, but quite small as well. So right now watching us, we can see how many people are watching. And there's 26 people only watching. So, you know, we only have like, no bigger than the classroom. Just sharing together information about New Zealand. It is just awesome, guys. So everybody being smiling and happy. I love that. Um, every time you guys are going to put a smiley face, it just makes me happy. Like Michael Connolly that says when we went back, he just put a massive smiley face. I love that. Thank you, Michael. All right. So um, Ber Benny Grayling says, hi, guys. Thank you for always sharing valuable information. Looking forward to your next border opening predictions. Thank you very much, mate. So again, the last week of October should be kind of all right because we're having our election on the 17th of October, I think. So we'll know yeah. the results around that that date. And then just let us compile the information, see, you know, if someone says, we're changing policy right away. So give us about like, you know, three, four, five days after that. And then bam, we do a video. Yeah. Uh, okay. Daniel Cabrera says, good morning, mates from Philippines here. Dariel Cal Cabrera, sorry. Hey, from Philippines, how are you doing? Are you living in Manila or are you living somewhere else? That's the one town I know in Philippines because <laughs> we have one of our neighbors that used to live in Manila. Uh, okay, Extreme Talota says, I was going to say, I'll try to make a video uh, about yous and post it on YouTube. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, cool. If you don't want to, as I said, you can send us a lot of videos and I can edit them and post it myself on this channel if you want to, um, from Tokoroa, if I remember. Sherry says, I share yous yesterday. Uh, hey, Laura, have you heard of a Facebook page called 
Girls love travel. Yeah, I don't really spend too much time on Facebook, so I haven't seen that particular um, Facebook group. I think over the years I've seen sort of like different sort of um, travel website um, groups and things. But yeah, um, I don't spend enough time on Facebook to really... Um, hear much of any groups to be She's honest scared of the big <laughs> big brother eye that mark zuckerberg is shining yeah. upon us when going <laughs> online so and i tend to agree i mean you know facebook is kind of a, a bit of a cesspool on everything which is not so good about the world and so sometimes it's a bit a bit yeah. too much so we i try usually to, yeah we i try usually to find it quite hard to find valuable information or valuable communities on facebook yeah. um so it, yeah it, it's just not really my sort of platform but um yeah so unfortunately i, I haven't heard of girls love travel she's more but, of I, a, but i do love travel so <laughs> she's more of a reddit girl yeah um, all right so oh gus and there's a lot of smiley face i love you gus thank you so much mate <laughs> Um, all right, so where were we? Super where deep. We? Oh, super deep said best level eight management course that can be pursued in New Zealand, which leads to residency. No idea. We are travel channel right here. I don't know what a management course will go over. I don't know what level eight is. And we do not legally have the right to give you advice on how to get residency in New Zealand because we're not registered immigration advisor. So out of this question, we can answer none of it. I'm sorry, mate. If you have any questions about traveling in New Zealand, though, we're here for you. Yeah. Um, Bernie says hi from Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, nice! Hi. You are the second person in, in South Africa that popped in the live chat today. That's really cool. Well, it cool. looks like we're popular. Maybe we're on a similar kind of. I was gonna say like, maybe it's a good time time, zone, time yeah. for you guys right now. Yeah. Adil says, uh, "Oh, Gus sent us a million smiley face. I like yep. that." Adil says, "Good day, Robin and Laura. Are the Maori village mentioned earlier wheelchair accessible?" Yes, uh, they're yes stroller, actually, yeah. I know they're stroller friendly, so I think yeah. they're wheelchair accessible yeah. as well. Yeah. I think that Mitai especially is, uh, I, I think I saw a sign that was saying that they were wheelchair accessible. So yeah, yeah, um, they will be all, all like very, you know, you could do like most of it. You know what I mean? Like there may be like one or two sections you can't, you know, kind of go around. For example, in Tamaki, you go around a little bit of a forest tonight. So there may be a couple of... Actually, no, I think you go. I think it's, it's, it's all, yeah. from, from memory, it's all, um, you know, flat sort of wide walkways and stuff. And even if they're... I was just thinking next to the walker. You know, like, you know, the stays on stairs, you could go down to go closer to the walker. Yeah. But, like, you wouldn't be able to kind of go and touch the walker, which is a traditional Mori canoe, but you can, you know, you're still going to be on the platform and be able to see it and all that. Yeah. Thing, um, so, yeah. yeah. I think in short, yeah, as far as we know, they're, they're wheelchair accessible. I have seen on the, their websites as well, because I've done a bit more research Research on it recently they say that they're yeah they say that they're stroller accessible so i assume that would also mean they are wheelchair accessible as well uh all right hassan says hi can you expect can you expect when border open for international students um i would advise you to kind of rewind the video i address that quite quite a lot of times but um hassan we will update this uh we will update you by the end of this month, there will be a video on this channel uh, about that. So make sure to hit like to say thank you for doing that and to uh, and subscribe so like that you get a notification. Gus say, hola guys from Portugal. Gus here enjoying your chat. Thank you, <laughs> Gus. You're awesome. Thanks for all the smiley faces as well. Yeah. Daryl Ca Cabrera says, from Manila here, my travel in New Zealand was postponed. Supposed to be um, in New Zealand this November 2020. The immigration New Zealand says border will still be closed until November 10th, 2020, until further notice. Yeah, so they go by the latest directive from the government, but expect it to be extended. The 10th yeah. of November, 2020, we never even talk about that date because everybody knows that's going to be extended. So that's why we don't really kind of mention the same date that immigration New Zealand says, because it's just legally they have to put this one, but it will change. So that's why we kind of brush over this uh, because we find it's irrelevant information at this point. Uh, Extreme Talota says, I posted a video or two on my YouTube channel about the rugby leagues two weeks ago. Oh, I'd have oh, to go cool. check that. Awesome. Uh, I know you have a lot of uh, new, new and uh, singing videos, which were quite nice. Catherine says, I have a funny but important question for you. Catherine, funny but important. That sounds like a trick. Uh, do you have a lot of mosquitoes in general? We actually do have a full mosquitoes article on nzpocketguy.com and we have a full no, video on the channel. No, sandflies. Oh, yeah, sandfly. Uh, yeah, well, we talk about mosquitoes as well. Anyway, yeah. mosquitoes, Laura, a lot of them here? There's not a lot, but there are 
some yeah there there are um mosquitoes in new zealand but it's not like um if you're going to a tropical country or anything where they're everywhere yeah. um they're sort of yeah they're, they're, they're more active in in summer um which is between um which is between december, december january and february, <laughs> february. Do you have a hard time with this weather <laughs> i know i always have to feel like okay where do i start where do i start but yeah so they are more prominent in in summer and obviously near sort of areas where there's water and stuff um but uh yeah it's not too crazy there's another type of insect called sandflies in new zealand which are which also are like leave you with annoying bites and they're a little bit more um uh yeah there's a more of those they're a little bit more annoying yeah there's more of those in new zealand and they're sort of even in grassy areas as well in summer so um they're more the ones to be um concerned with they're not they don't carry diseases or anything but you'll definitely want to have some sort of insect repellent if you're traveling in new zealand in summer uh, on the NZ pocket guide we do have tips for sand flies we have uh, also recommendation of the best insect repellents and we do have um we do have some articles about mosquitoes and all that and there is a video on this channel about mosquitoes and sand flies as well so here you go catherine um, but that was that was an actual value, valid question. That yeah. wasn't that wasn't a trick. I like that. <laughs> Sane uh, says hello, guys. Looking forward to uh, that prediction about after the election. Sane from South Africa. Oh, someone else from South wow, Africa. Yeah. Awesome. BJN says Robin. Today I like your maroon jersey. <laughs> and Laura, those horizontal stripes on your jersey compliment you. Laura, what are you drinking? And Robin and Laura, we really like your golden cushion. Very descriptive comments. I like the fact you describe what we're wearing in case someone is just listening to it. Yes. This is what we're wearing today. And uh, Laura is drinking straight vodka uh, every <laughs> every day. She drinks a whole uh, glass every of Every morning, 8 a.m., New Zealand time, I'm on the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you drinking today, Laura? I'm drinking H2O. It's All very right. nice. Um, Super Deep says, uh, first of all, love your content. Just a question. No offense, please. Why do you choose New Zealand only, even if it's a small country rather than Canada, USA, etc.? Love your content. Um, well, I did live in Canada. I did live in USA and I just enjoyed New Zealand mo most. Uh, I just like the accessibility to uh, the outdoors and uh, everything that there is to do around. I just, you know, like in Canada or in USA, from my experience, obviously, I am not speaking for people that are living in those places uh, because, you know, you guys probably have a different experience. But from my personal experience living, uh, you know, and I lived in Australia as well and everything, I felt like every single time you want to do an activity, it's a journey. You kind of have to pack your bag, you go on for a weekend, you sometimes have to stay somewhere, there's a long drive. You know, it's, it, you have to, you know, just getting out of that big city in which you live in, it's already a couple of hours almost to go and get do something, right? Well, I feel like in New Zealand, except if you live in Auckland, uh, which I don't recommend staying and spending time in Auckland or staying in Auckland, you know, I say explore the rest of New Zealand. You can get out and about and do things in, you know, in a heartbeat. And you can do like two, three walks in a day. It's just very accessible to explore the amazing wilderness. Um, so that's my personal experience. And that's why I chose to live in New Zealand. Why did you choose to live in New Zealand, Laura? Um, I think I just I usually like to go for places that are a little bit alternative than the you know the US the Canada and stuff they're kind of I guess it, they they're quite they have large populations it's um, there wasn't really too much that was like interesting me that was a little bit different about them so New Zealand seemed like oh that's like a smaller country that I feel like not a you know, not a lot of people really know about or, you, you know, that sort of thing. And I kind of felt like it would be a place to more, you know, find things out for yourself and that, you know, just see some amazing sort of natural landscapes because I'm more into sort of um, nature and wilderness, um, prefer preferably to urban areas. So, yeah, that's kind of the reason I chose New Zealand. Here you go. JK says, is it true that New Zealand doesn't have a highway system or expressway type roads? Uh, yeah, most of the roads in New Zealand are called highway. They are normal kind of small one lane on each side roads. There are some highway systems that lead into and out of Auckland just to deal with the con uh, con uh, congestion, congestion. Yeah. of uh, traffic because there is uh, almost a third of the population now you know, that is living in Auckland. Um, so yeah, there is just that. But yeah, New Zealand mostly is just normal roads. That is that is true. Yeah. Clay Bryan says, uh, referring to the sand fly and the mosquitoes, we guess uh, that he was eaten alive on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, the West so, Coast is renowned for having the yeah. sort of worst sort of yeah sand flies. Here's another uh, feedback for you, Catherine. Michael Connell says, Catherine, we have mosquitoes, but uh, it's. 
on the midges that get you in department conservation places and along water areas. They eat you alive, down things. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're talking about, the scent flies. Um, and yeah, use insect repellent. You need a, quite a strong one, but yeah, you'll be good. I wear mean, long sleeve they, clothing yeah. as well. Is and it depends on people. We really didn't have that much issue with them. Um, uh, and at one point, I got one bite, and then you got to be infected. And I have my finger like tripling sizes. Yeah, it's so usually... it really depends on the season. And yeah, the and it's also the um, the, a good way to avoid sunflies is just is just to keep on moving. If you're sort of just like lying about somewhere, maybe if you've stopped for a picnic, that's usually when they come and get you. Just as soon as you start to stop moving, and you're sort of in like a grassy or foresty area or near yeah. rivers and stuff, you stop moving and that's when it's, yeah, that's when it gets a little bit unbearable. All right. Deepak says, are you a NZ resident or are you on a tourist visa? What's your home country? Love your content. From Sydney boy, uh, <laughs> from India. Okay. Uh, originally, I was born in France. I worked and traveled in quite a lot of different countries. And now, yes, I am a New Zealand resident. I've uh, been in New Zealand for about 10 years. Yes. And I'm originally from England. Um, and now I am also a New Zealand resident. Catherine says, all right, thank you for all your answers. You're very welcome, Catherine. Will we see you next week at the same time? That'd be fun. Clay says, eating your favorite spread, Marmite. No, Clay, you're mm. wrong. Catherine, you haven't come to New Zealand just yet. Trust me. Yeah. If any local ask you to try something called Marmite, run for the hills. Do not try it. It's disgusting. <laughs> Robin and I actually did go through a stint when we were traveling around the South Island where we were eating Marmite because we heard that it was a good way to make, um, to repel sunflies. It does sunflies. not work. It's it terrible. It does not work at all and it tastes awful. So don't fall for that trick. <laughs> All right. Uh, Extreme Tolota said, well, guys, I'm going to head off and get some coffee. Have a good day, Robin and Laura. You're very welcome, yeah, mate. have a good day uh, as have well. Have a good day, too. And that wraps up our live session nicely. I love that. I love that just someone says bye-bye and here you go. Uh, yes, Catherine, write that down. Do not let Clay talk you into trying Marmite. It is <laughs> awful. Um, anyway, thank you guys for joining us for another week. We're here to answer your questions about New Zealand every single week at 8 a.m. New Zealand time on Sunday, which is Saturday yeah. on your side. So we do have a link in the description below so you can see when uh, our next live video is in your time zone. So make sure to check that out so you can schedule it correctly. But also you can always click on the subscribe button and besides the subscribe button below this video, there's a bell icon and that makes sure that you get some notifications for our next video. Holo wolo, Marmite peanut butter on a sandwich. Good idea. Terrible idea. <laughs> Anything with Marmite is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go for it. Obviously, it's just my, my perspective. If you do love Marmite, you know, Clay knows that I'm just uh, teasing him. If he loves Marmite, he can eat as much as he wants. Yes. I just think it's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> uh, I just, you know... <sighs> <laughs> if one day we hit, you know, if one day we hit a hundred thousand subscribers, on that day I'll do a video of me eating a slice of toast with marmite on it. Not even a full jar. Oh, I'm no, I, <laughs> this is no. Oh my god, that would be awful. That would be terrible. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for all the smiles. Thank you for joining us. And by the way, if you are watching a replay of this video and you didn't make it live onto the video and you're feeling sad because your question wasn't answered. Put your question in the comment section of any of our videos. We're always here to help. We pick up those questions. We always answer. We're here to build a fantastic communities of people helping each other, having an awesome time, enjoying what New Zealand has to offer. In the meantime, stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Yep. Be kind. Bye-bye. And see you next week.